What's up guys, here is 11 minutes of useless League of Legends information, Worlds Edition. This will be filled with info about Worlds, the players, and everything in between. And thank you Crucial for sponsoring this video. Let's go. This is a chart that shows which countries are represented at Worlds this year, and it's pretty interesting to look at. For starters, believe it or not, Mexico is the most represented country in NA this Worlds. South Korea has by far the most players represented with 38 players, which isn't too much of a surprise, but it's still impressive nonetheless. On the flip side, the United States has only one player, and that's Blabber from Cloud9. On that note, the LC CS is also the region with the lowest percentage of regional players at only three, and that would be Blabber, Vulcan, and Jojo. The LCK, VCS, PCS, and Turkey, on the other hand, are the only regions who are only using native players, which is pretty cool. In total, there are 23 different countries present across 126 different players. Yo, if you're looking to play League or any other game at your peak, it's crucial, that's gonna make so much more sense in a second, that you have a good computer along with good memory and storage. But it's kind of hard to have good memory and storage if you don't know what to upgrade. Luckily, today's video is sponsored by Crucial. There it is. Specifically, Crucial System Scanner by Micron. As you might have guessed, Crucial System Scanner scans your computer, automatically providing you with compatible memory and storage parts in minutes. All you have to do is click the link below, go to their site, and start your free scan. As you can see, the scanner is insanely easy to use. It took like one second for it to load for me, and it immediately provided me with a compatible, beneficial, and affordable upgrade options, which I like really need actually, because League of Legends footage takes up so much freaking space. Anyways, unlike some scanners out there, Crucial shows you compatible upgrades for your PC without accessing any personal data or installing anything on your computer, and it's also trusted by millions of users. Seriously, go take advantage of this, or at the very least, check it out, because, well, it's free, and on top of that, if you use my link below, you'll also get 15% off of all Crucial products with my code JOKE15. Anyways, thank you so much, Crucial, for sponsoring this video, and now back to the video. So far at Worlds, the blue side has won 57.4% of games, which is actually kind of insane. Additionally, First Dragon has gone to the red side 61.7% of the time, First Rift Herald has gone to the blue side 61.7% of the time, First Tower has gone to the red side 55.3% of the time, and the first Baron has gone to the blue team 57.4% of the time. This is also a great time to see how your crystal ball picks are doing. The champion picked most so far is Aatrox picked 24 times, the champion banned the most is actually Kalista at 30, and the champion with the highest win rate with at least 5 games right now is Tom Kench. There have already been 2 pentakills so far, and the longest game was 44 minutes and 48 seconds, which is just below the 44 minutes and 59 second cutoff if you chose that. And Teemo got picked once, which really isn't relevant to the pick'em, but it's still worth mentioning. Wait, is that locked in? That's locked. That's locked? Are we actually seeing ADD Teemo top? Did you know that when pro players come to different regions for a tournament, like Worlds for instance, Riot gives them special accounts to use which have all the skins, champions, and other features like 20 room pages unlocked for them. The account will already be level 30 and will also start with a plat 1 internal MMR, which means they'll automatically start off against players around plat 1 or diamond 4 in their first ranked games. This is a list of almost all the world's players and their NA account summoner names for solo queue. I'm going to scroll fairly slowly so you can kind of see who's on here, but you may need to pause it. Still, I'll leave a link below for this site too because it not only gives you stats, but it also alerts you when they're live, which is pretty cool. Additionally, you can also see who's in ranked and how their games are going. For example, the highest ranked player so far is already Grandmasters with 540 LP. A quick update on some other players too, Showmaker currently has an 100% win rate and is 10-0. Caps was undefeated at 11-0 until just the other day, and surprisingly, Faker of all people has the 4th lowest win rate out of all the world's players with a 44.4% win rate. He currently has 8 wins and 10 losses, and is also currently Plat 1, which as noted earlier, is also their starting MMR. I will say though, this poor dude has probably been getting griefed every single freaking game. It's NA solo queue and everyone wants to kill Faker. Also in his defense, he's gotten ace in almost every single one of those games he's lost. Speaking of Faker, here's a clip of Philip from Fly attempting to quote, outplay Faker. Wait, I'm gonna I'm, I'm try to outplay Faker. I'm gonna try to outplay him. Are you sure? He's Faker. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. It, it's Faker, but I'm gonna do it. No, no, don't, 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 don't do it, bro. No, no, don't I'm gonna do it. it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Are you ready? Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm I believe in you. <laughs> Okay. Um, he owed it the wave and just kill you. As this person said, you simply can't hide in bush against hide on bush. Riot has announced that they'll be broadcasting the world's finals to cinemas all over the United States and Canada. They'll of course be streaming the opening ceremony and also apparently there may be some special appearances to certain cinemas from league influencers and celebrities. Of course, that's just what it says on their website. But most importantly, they'll also be offering some commemorative thunder sticks. Woo! 
Woo! Especially like the cinema available that's 10 minutes from the venue. But honestly, it's fair considering the lowest ticket price for finals was like $700. It's probably even more now. There's some really weird rules at Worlds. For example, right before the Loud versus EG game, Jojo was stopped and called out for not having the proper footwear attire. He came onto the stage wearing Crocs and apparently that's not allowed in the rule book. According to section 4.5 of the official League of Legends World rule book, all players must wear pants, which is a pretty good rule, and must wear closed toed shoes during the entirety of any WCE event or appearance. Still, nevertheless, I can't believe they actually made him change his shoes before they started that game. Definitely one of the more unusual delays. Some other world's rules that you may have not known about is that Riot employees aren't allowed to participate in tournaments. Subs have to be on site during the games, and if they're not, they can be fined up to $20,000. Hand warmers are among the listed items that staff will provide to players upon request, which honestly makes sense, but something I've never thought of until now. Also, players do have the power to pause the game, but can only do so for these reasons below. One of which says fan gank, which am I crazy or is that like fan gank if like a fan jumps onto the stage and jumps onto a player? That can't be it, right? Honestly, I don't know what else it would be though. Like, why is it listed like that? Anyways, similar to other years, this year's World's League of Legends prize pool is $2,225,000. And the distribution of that goes as follows. First place receives 22% of the prize pool, which is $486,000. Second receives 15%, which is $333,000. $350. Third and fourth receive 8%. Fifth through eighth receive 4.5%. Ninth through twelfth receive 2.5%, and so on. On top of the almost half a million dollars of prize money you win for winning worlds, each player also receives a percentage of the earnings from the world skins that they choose. This is actually usually where players make most of their money. Day one of worlds this year kicked off with a pretty impressive 1.1 million peak viewers, 830,000 average viewers, and almost 9 million hours watched. However, if you are comparing it to worlds last year, we actually dropped 200,000 peak viewers. 2021 had 1.3 million peak viewers. EG's victory over Mad Lions was the first time NA had taken a best of five versus EU ever, which is honestly insane to think about. On top of that, the last time there was a best of five between NA and EU was almost 1,300 days ago at MSI in 2019. Also, did anyone catch this wave at the end? Just NA staying toxic, I guess. Through Faker's almost 10-year career, he's only lost to an NA team twice. The first was against CLG at MSI in 2016, and the second was actually this year at MSI versus EG. Still again, Against NA teams, Faker has a 92% win rate, so I guess it's not looking too great for Cloud9, at least statistically speaking. Speaking of Faker, here's a bit of a speed run on useless information for him and other pro players. Faker is actually distant cousins of Gamayushi, and his favorite champion is unfortunately Yasuo. If he wasn't playing mid lane, he said his next role he'd swap to would be jungle. This summer, he reached 4,000 assists in pro play throughout his career. His net worth is estimated to be around $10 million, and his favorite animal are penguins. Zven from Cloud9 was the first player to ever win a championship in both the LEC and LCS. Closer from 100 Thieves' ID comes from the TV show Suits. Abadaga from 100 Thieves got his name from the sound of a villager when you'd move him around from Age of Empire. And this is the actual sound from the game. Abadakas. Fuhi from 100 Thieves sometimes hovers Aatrox in Champion Select because it's his girlfriend's favorite champion. Barrel currently on DRX had the world's 2020 Leona skin modeled after his wife. Or in other words, this character from Princess Connect Redive. Puppy, cat, sub, thank you. Canyon currently on Damwon Kia got the first ever pentakill for a jungler in the LCK back in 2020 during the summer season. The pentakill for the jungle Nidalee! A lot of people don't know that Scout from EDG applied for tryouts at SKT in season 5 but was denied the mid lane spot so he went over to EDG instead. Inspired from EG made it to the top 50 players leaderboard at only 15 years old. Knight currently on top esports holds the record for most solo kills in a single regular split. He recorded 35 solo kills last summer in the LPL. He's also left handed and one of the only players to use the mouse with his left hand and right hand for keyboard. Most left-handed players just use the right hand for the mouse anyways. Danny, who was on EG, started playing League when he was only six years old. He reached Challenger when he was only 14 years old and debuted to the LCS at only 17 years old. In 2019, Wonder, who was currently on Fnatic, was issued an $1,000 fine for playing WoW Classic. It was considered a commercial violation, and this was the official statement of G2 after that. Speaking of violations, there's actually a Google Sheet that shows a lot of the penalties issued currently and throughout the last couple years. It even shows some of the active bans and suspensions. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in looking at it further. Hillisang, currently on Fnatic, got his name from playing WoW back in the day, and apparently while he was playing WoW, he wanted his nickname to look like a Chinese one so people would respect him more in the game. Caps, currently on G2, along with Uzi, are the only two non-Korean players to have appeared in consecutive World Finals. Of course, he went a total of 0-6 and six in those games, but that's beside the point. Flacket, also currently on G2, owns a pet duck named Tet, who has quickly become the most iconic pet in the LEC. Levi, currently on GAM played on a $5 mouse that he bought at a flea market for MSI in 2017. 
Also, his name is a reference to Levi from Attack on Titan. Chinese fans use 369's name as a tool for rating his performance in games. If he's playing well, they'll spam 9, but if he's playing bad, they'll spam 3. Yagao means toothpaste in Chinese. Zhao Hu from RNG is the only player to win two international titles across two different roles. In 2018 at MSI, he won as a mid laner, and in 2021 at MSI, he won as a top laner. There's a special Mercedes Benz chest that you could possibly win. Basically, if you go to this site and qualify by clicking these buttons fast enough, then you'll be entered into a chance at being randomly selected to win one of these chests. The clicking challenge itself is actually a little harder than it looks. The key is to not misclick or it'll reset the multiplier, but otherwise it's pretty simple. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in trying your luck. This is what happens when you take the riot filter off of Captain Flowers commentating. This was a game from Champions Q that he was watching. And double it is on the hunt. The haste from the karma is looking to get him away, but Mr. Dot got f***ed. Double lift delivers the dick. Oh my god. Oh, dick twist. Dude, can you imagine how entertaining this would be to listen to in a world's match? Also, it's kind of impressive that he pretty much has an on and off switch for this. This was also another clip of him watching C9 versus Unicorns a while back. Somewhere, some way, somehow, North America always f***s it up at the finish line. F*** me. Caster curses are probably one of the most entertaining parts of pro play. And the timing of this one is just too good. I feel bad for Niski as well, getting uh, kind of like we talked about that double counter pick, but he has done a great job surviving this lane phase thus far. Impact, what a roam! That's gonna be the kill in mid lane and Georgia Puen capitalizes. You, you had to say that, right? You just had to say that. This clip of RNG flaming Xiaohu is proof that the League of Legends spirit doesn't get any better at the pro level. <laughs> This clip, on the other hand, proves that even pro ADC players can't escape the inevitable fate of an ADC versus a tank. This little ash. <laughs> oh, Penta? Is it a Penta? Penta? Yo, Tenacity. Give it Tenacity. Don't be that guy. He is giving it. You've probably at least heard of Champions Q by now, but in case you don't know what it is, Champions Q is basically NA's version of the Chinese Super Server. It's a server exclusive to top talent in the NA, like current pro players, retired pro players, collegiate players, and even some solo queue players. The reason it's so popular, especially right now, is because a lot of the world's players recently joined, making things substantially more competitive. As far as Champions Q itself goes, it's actually ranked completely separate from the regular NA ranked queue. All of the games are made through a private Discord server, where once you're grouped with the other players, you'll need to make your own custom match and then play the game out. The way they've incorporated everything to Discord is honestly pretty interesting, but I feel like at this point, it's almost worth making it an actual server. On top of that, Champions Q actually has a $400,000 prize pool, which you can earn money each split depending on how well you're doing. Anyways, if you're interested in watching Champions Q and seeing some really high gameplay outside of Worlds, you can go to this website to see who's live and who's currently playing. I'll leave a link below. One last thing that I thought was pretty funny is apparently everyone, even when they're not playing, would just chill in an AFK room together instead of just disconnecting, including Faker which sure why not in the music video for star walking you can see core jj as well as someone holding up a ruler in reference to his former teammate ruler there are also some other references to like humanoid holding a line in reference to mad line and a few others as well and finally to add to all the drama here's my personal world song tier list don't kill me thank you so much for watching a massive shout out to my tier 3 patrons stefan knockback and james and thank you so freaking much to all my other incredible patrons as well all right bye